Well, welcome back to another session with the 6th grade drawing project. Uh, it looks like progress is being made and that's really what we're looking for when we make art projects is to simply keep the progress coming. And so when we left off in our last session we had something similar to what you see in front of you and I've spent some time considering what I want to do with this and I like this golden yellow color and all we've been doing over the last few sessions was looking at our uh, piece of artwork the um, reference piece as we're calling it what we're looking at and then reproducing that here by using a grid system that's one inch squares here two inch squares on our large piece of paper so far mine has been pretty successful I'm hoping that everybody else's is also looking quite nice so when I stopped yesterday I was using golden yellow and I've had some time to think about it and I'm going to keep using the golden yellow uh, and I'm going to do some work with it and other parts of my car so one of the things that I think is kind of an interesting effect is to uh, well I like it when the rims match each other anyway so I'm going to start there on the easy stuff because mismatched rims just don't look that good now um, you'll notice that you can see some of the grid markings through my coloring uh, as far, far as that goes the demonstration which I'm doing for you um, I used a red colored pencil so you could see the lines, the difference between the pencil lines and uh, the lines that are on your reference drawing for the car. And so that makes it difficult for me to uh, erase that and I have erased it as vigorously as I can without erasing a hole in the paper. So that particular flaw shouldn't be present in your work because you were using a graphite pencil in order to draw those grid lines and as a result of that your uh, your picture should not have any of those lines visible in the uh, car at least now all the lines in the background are fine uh, we're going to use those to create a checkerboard uh, background in our drawing here when we get that far however uh, I'm satisfied with my drawing even though it does have some markings showing through it uh, I knew that that would happen when I began the drawing however that's not a flaw that you should have in your own drawing and if it is that's something that when we do the grading of it you should account for that and if I were to grade my own drawing uh, then I would also account for that so when I get to the end of this project I'll probably give my uh, a pronouncement of what my self-assessment would be, my self-evaluation of my own uh, drawing project. And well, you can compare your results to that and see if you agree with it. And if you do, well, then you might uh, want to embrace that yourself. And if you don't agree with it, well, then you know it's your project also. You can believe what you want to believe. Okay, so I'm continuing just to color patiently, accurately, rolling that colored pencil around in my fingertips so that I keep the little sharp point always developed when I need it to tuck up against some other uh, portion of the drawing so I have that nice uh, sharp portion of it that allows me to get that control, that precise control that everybody wants from a very sharp pencil but usually ends up snapping their pencil off trying to achieve it by sharpening it so if you simply just get a good working point on the pencil and then rotate it constantly in your fingertips what you will find not with just colored pencils but drawing pencils also and writing utensils if you're using a pencil to write you will find that it stays sharper longer and that you have to sharpen it less frequently and sharpening the pencil constantly uh, really uh, slows down your work. Some people like to sharpen all their pencils before they start. I don't know about that either because if the pencil has already got a reasonably uh, 
a reasonably work worthy point on it, then you should uh, use it until you must sharpen it again. Uh, and so, the more you sharpen it, it tends to stress the lead. Torque, which is this twisting motion that a pencil sharpener puts on a pencil when you sharpen with it, that torque it twists it twists the lead and if the lead is not strong enough it will crack that lead somewhere up in here so sharpening it all the time seems to just weaken it each time you do that and so uh, it's, it's, it's important just to get as much uh, production as you can out of one well sharpened pencil uh, and then move on Thing. Okay, now what I was thinking about when I was uh, uh, not on camera talking about this was considering how much uh, more of the uh, golden yellow I can use uh, because it will look more unified if I try to, uh, excuse me, if I try to keep certain areas in the body trim as one of those all that kind of same color. And so I'm going to continue on with the golden yellow. I really like this particular color anyway. And see, since this stripage will touch our windshield, that'll be a good thing too. I'll kind of move your viewer's eye along that yellow stripe until it gets up to here, where it touches the next portion. So I'm going to take this uh, stripe all the way around the door. and that people that follow that yellow stripe will also move their eye down to where the pipes are at, which are also in yellow. So part of movement is simply engaging your viewer's sense <coughs> excuse me, sense of comparison. And so you <coughs> want to kind of move their eye along and then it's they see uh it directs their eye to the next thing that you want them to compare. So, you know, you're kind of moving them along. They're like, oh, well, this is yellow, and this is yellow, and then this is yellow, and this, and it all kind of moves their eye, whoa, excuse me, in a specific direction that you are trying to achieve as the artist. So, you know, being the artist, you're the one that should decide what you want the viewer to look at. And you do that by applying... Uh, the elements of art and the principles of design. All that stuff we learned in our very first unit, if you recall that. Okay, now, there's uh, one more detail that I want to uh, put in here, maybe two, with my golden yellow. Because there's a way, this is starting to come together in my mind, how I want it to look. And one of these places would be right here. There's a tiny little stripe right here that has always caught my attention. So I'm going to put that in there, golden yellow as well. And I'm going to put in uh, a my number up here. I'm going to have that in, golden yellow. And then I really like the idea of outlining these stripes uh, on my flames that way as well. So I'm going to continue with that. Now, uh, sometimes you don't necessarily know precisely what color something is going to be when you set out to color it, and I understand that. Uh, I'm a big, big believer in planning out your work. And so when we're in the 7th and the 8th grade, we have much more planning goes into what we do. And in the eighth grade, it's very, uh, very much planned out. So we use worksheets to help us uh, get our planning sequence under control so that whatever it is that we decide to make, <coughs> we've got a plan for it already. And uh, that plan is then put into a, you know, practice. And then if you have a good plan, uh, a lot of times it works out for you. That looks fantastic, speaking of a plan. Okay, there's so one more over here. But in the uh, sixth grade, we focus more on skill building here. And uh, we're doing a pretty good job here. Uh, since we're not even, uh, if you're paying attention to what we're doing here, we're not even in the physical classroom. But if we were, 
uh, your experience would be very much like this. Uh, the, I draw with the students frequently uh, when we do projects. Uh, when we take notes, uh, we take them from the projection screen, uh, just like you did uh, when you took down your notes on this unit on drawing earlier. Uh, so uh, a lot of what I uh, want to really do is to uh, have my students understand when they come back to the physical classroom that really nothing has changed all that much. The expectations that we all have and uh, what we're trying to achieve as the uh, teachers and, and uh, the administrators and the students and the parents is to really have as little interruption as possible in the whole learning process. That looks pretty good too. I'm going to do one more thing in yellow and it's going to be all of this information, this little circle that surrounds my initial right there. And uh, that's going to look really very cool. So let's start down here. Now I'm kind of already starting to think about the color of my car in this case. And I'm not really, uh, this yellow looks good with a lot of different colors but I want it not to be really stand out too much against the other colors. I want it <clears throat> to pretty much look, uh, you know, unified, like it was meant to be the way it is. Although I don't have a issue with students uh, deciding to use all types of colors in their car. In fact, I encourage that so that we can see where one surface of the car ends and the next surface of the car begins. That is a great way to use color. Uh, not just using it to uh, fill in a vast open spaces, but to indicate where one surface ends and the next one begins. Sometimes that's difficult to tell. Now as the artist, you know where it's at, but the people who have to look at it may not know where it's at. And so, without having to tell them, <coughs> they should be able to be directed to it. Alright, I'm going to say that is great. <laughs> okay, I like it. Uh, I hope yours is coming along as well as mine is. Okay, now I'm going to I'm going to do something now that's going to help me out a great deal. I'm going to go to some orange and on the insides of my flames and in here I'm going to use orange. And that's going to help me out a lot because I have a plan for another color that uh should perhaps if done properly should cover up a lot of uh, these grid lines that are still showing through my artwork, which is, uh, I'm not real happy about that. However, I'm going to have to live with that, I suppose. So, this area in, in the middle of my flames, I'm going to make that this orange color. In fact, this is yellow-orange. And this particular color doesn't get used a lot. Uh, so, I encourage you to, if we were in the physical classroom, or even if we're not in the physical classroom, use some yellow-orange. Give it some attention. It's sad when it doesn't get used. Now I think that this orange, see, looks really good against the yellow too. Uh, orange is made by mixing together red and yellow, and when you do that, you get um, so you get a unified kind of looks like the colors match, just like you would want them to match if you were wearing a suit of clothes. Or if you were, uh, you know, designing a living room, you don't want all of your curtains and your furniture and stuff to be all different crazy colors that don't look good together. You would want them to all kind of match. And so in this case, yellow and orange go together because they're part of the same color family in, on the color wheel. Which is something we will go into on painting. Okay, this is starting to starting to work out. It's you know the you got to think back on when we first started this project, and it seemed like a million years was going to pass before we were able to actually get the coloring going and really make the car itself. But the truth is, it's only been a few days, and uh, in those few days, a lot of progress gets made, and so. You got to be patient when you're trying to do things that require um, commitment, and if you want them to look good, that looks good. We're gonna do the same thing on this flame over here. So 
uh, you know, I guess what I guess if I had something I'm trying to teach the students, it's to be committed to the work. Is you know, do your best. A piece of artwork is a complete and total reflection on yourself. Uh, people want to know why you would even make it. It'd be like writing a song that when you didn't even care how it sounded, and then people listen to it and they're like, "Good Lord, why was even? Why would even waste time?" So it's a reflection on yourself and your work habits and the things that you think are important. Uh, is details really important to you? Well, then you should uh, make that obvious in the work that you create. If uh, big ideas are important to you, then you have to come up with a way to communicate those big ideas to other people. And so drawing and painting and creating sculptures and architecture and writing for that matter uh, are all ways to get people to understand your ideas. And that's all this really is. And visual art is just a form of communication. And uh, I what's being communicated many times is not even about the subject matter. It's a lot of times about the person who's making the art. And if you go to an art museum, you'll listen to people say things. They'll marvel over how much difficulty it must have taken to create, you know, some fine objects. And, oh, and people say, I never have the patience for that. Or they'll say, I wish I could do that. Or, I can't do these things. And a lot of times that's what people say to motivate others. They say, oh, it can't be done. And next thing you know, they're doing it. And so uh, and there's certain people in life, you challenge them, and they will, uh, they will meet that challenge. Okay, so here's some tricky coloring. Very tight control, my breath. And now we got through that narrow passage. No problem. Okay, so the orange is looking pretty good there. Now I think I'll use the orange in one more place, and that's going to be in the circle behind my initial there, in that area above and below it. also show through the opening in the letter B as well. Okay, so I hope your project's coming along uh, as well as mine. Since we've been drawing it together, you should have a pretty good representation of uh, the reference drawing uh, on your drawing paper, your 11, or excuse me, your 10 by 16 inch drawing paper so that we can multiply everything times 2 when we have to. And we do sometimes have to measure things out in order to get just the right uh, appearance. And sometimes you look at the measurement and you measure it out and it still doesn't seem to be quite right to you. So you have to ask yourself, do you trust what you think? Or trust what you see, or do you trust the measurement? And so that's a tough call. <laughs> Sometimes you got to trust the measurement. Depends on, I guess it depends on how tired you are. And if you're so that tired, you should probably just stop working on the project for a while. And I've uh, worked on painting projects that were just mentally exhausting. And by the time I finally I got to making just silly mistakes that was taking me longer to fix than I had thought, so I just had to quit working on it until I was well rested. Okay, there we go. I'm half tempted to color in that door orange on there too, but I think I'm going to resist that urge for right now. Okay, so we've got a brown steering wheel, we've got a uh, yellow trim work and rims and I think I'm going to have to go to one of my favorite colors and that color is going to be red orange it looks almost red <clears throat> it's like the color of a grading pencil a lot of people tell me and so it's a good substitute for red if you don't have 
any good red left. That, that lead is flimsy. <clears throat> so I'm going to start with my red uh, in this area, maybe just up here in the front. And my red orange, that is. And I've got a good working point on there. And I'm going to. There we go. And this red orange will show up really nice against the yellow orange. So I'm right now between the parts of the suspension, I think the sway bars is what we've been calling them for some time now. And uh, I think my car is going to be mainly red. Now a lot of people have a lot of other stuff on their car, uh, and that's fine. If you draw, you know, like a bunch of decals or, or additional decorations, that's perfectly fine. That's an expression of what you uh, want that car to say about you. And that's fine with me. Uh, a lot of people put, you know, uh, their interests on there. If you're involved in music or certain types of music you like to listen to or games that you play, uh, just anything that you place on your car has to be, of course, appropriate for school. So it can't you know, have inappropriate content on it just because it's about you and what you like. It's still got to be about, uh, it's got to be school appropriate. So, especially anything that is going to be graded in art class has to totally be school appropriate. Okay, that letter, that letter, that color of red really shows nicely. And I'm going to continue that right in here above my sway bar. And I'm going to trim it in between and around my flames. So, the coloring itself usually takes longer than the actual drawing does because the coloring is tedious work. The drawing is only, only half the work, maybe. I don't know. It depends on how complicated the project is that you're attempting to draw. But this is not so complicated a drawing. Although some people will struggle with it. People always do. Some people are Literally, I believe everybody can learn to draw at some level, but I do also believe that there's some people that just, it is, it is beyond there. It's like singing. You know, there's, I think everybody has a voice, and if you find it, then you can probably sing. Uh, but uh, there's, you know, some people that just really, they just don't get the drawing thing. And uh, I think a lot of that is because they've, perhaps not done so well at it in the past and they maybe didn't have a an instructor or somebody that was teaching them how to do these things and I've been fortunate I've had some uh, excellent teachers in my time and I'm fortunate that way strangely one of my college professors when I first started teaching art so way back when I was learning art in college in the 80s, I was taught by an art professor at Wright State University. And then, many, many, many years later, I was uh, teaching art. And it turns out that one of the students that I had was the daughter of one of my previous professors. And that was so unusual. Uh, to have that kind of uh, karmic wheel turn on me like that. Uh, I frequently take uh, art classes for my own professional development at Sinclair Community College, Sinclair University. And many times I've been down at Sinclair and I've walked past a display of student works from, you know, younger people that are college age. And I've seen amongst them the work of some of my former students, which really makes me proud to see that they're still out there making artwork and that they uh, are proud enough to create it and have it put on display. So these are... Uh, things that, you know, make teaching art interesting. It's a good profession.
Okay, now I think that looks really nice. I hope I don't run out of this red-orange colored pencil before I run out of picture here, because it's going to get used up. I'm going to have to find another one if I can look around and find one. I'm using a Crayola colored pencil kit, 24 pack, so I don't have some of the more exciting colors in there. However, these have always done a great job for the students that I've taught. They're, the lead is very solid for most of the time and is durable. And the colors are opaque if you color them appropriately. Or if you put light pressure on them, of course, you're not going to get any opacity. But by now, after our design project, <coughs> you should have really, really, really strong hands by now. Maybe even a callus on your coloring fingers. So we're just going to keep coloring, and if you're keeping up with what I'm doing, and I color fast, but I try to color good as well. So see, by using this red-orange color, it's kind of covering up some of my grid lines. Uh, that were coming through simply because I had to do the uh, video of this lesson. So you can camouflage that sometimes uh, with the appropriate color. Now I like to use brighter colors on these and then that leaves me the option to do maybe darker colors in the background if I was uh, motivated to do it. But um, a lot of times the brighter colors look more uh, they're more appropriate for uh, these old school cars. Although I've seen people color them in greens, uh, but you know, the muscle cars from the 60s and the 70s, they had some crazy colors on them. You know, these weird light blues and toxic greens and uh, all types of interesting vari varieties of uh, lime greens and jade greens and so. Uh, the 70s, 60s and 70s was a great time for cars. Well, I'm lucky I grew up then. That's how I ended up to be a car enthusiast after all this, <coughs> all these years. Okay, let's just. I'm just going to keep on keeping on. That's how it gets done. And that's how you make stuff that is worth keeping. Still like your math worksheet that nobody ever keeps, right? Pull it right in the groove sometimes. It makes that little skipped over groove disappear. So we would uh, be just coloring every day if we were in the physical classroom. We'd be uh, at this point, uh, each day you're in there, you just got to make, make your work happen. And then at the end of a week, we would have a daily work grade. Uh, at the end of the unit, we have a quiz. <coughs> at the end of the quiz, you know, we grade the artwork, so uh, right now I think we're on about, let's see, this is probably, I'm going to say maybe seven of this project, and then uh, three days on the lecture and notes and such, so that's uh, maybe in about Ten days. We've only got a couple, three days left on this project maximum in order to get it done so that we can uh, <coughs> meet our deadlines for the rest of the uh, nine-week quarter here and, you know, get on to the next project and unit. We'll wrap this one up and move on. That's looking really nice. That, uh, that red and orange and yellow together. So red and yellow make orange if you kind of get that idea. What I'm trying to do there. Okay. So I'm just going to keep on keeping on. Now I may have to do something here to make, you know, maybe vary this a little bit so it looks a little different. But I don't know yet. I'm just going to keep working on this spot right here for now. And uh, reserve my options uh, if I choose to do something different in another section of the car. But I'm going to, so I'm going to color it in right up next to the line. See, now a lot of kids... Uh, and students will, you know, just try to color the whole thing in as fast as they can, right over top of the lines. And that really doesn't give you a very good finish to the project. So, my opinion is, you know, 
if you choose to change a color that way, you can do it. Uh, if you just, you know, color it completely right across the lines you spent so much time putting in there anyway when we made the drawing, well, that's not helping anything. So, uh, if you put it together in pieces like this, it will have much more of that realistic mechanical look, the way it really is built in real life. It's assembled by pieces. And those pieces are generally all painted, and then they're assembled, too. So, let's see what we got here. So, this particular section, say, if you do all the little contained in sections, then you, uh, you kind of leave your options open for if you want to change colors to something else. If you just sling it in there across all the lines, well, that kind of limits your options then. Now, I'm going to go with this to behind my letter of my initial in here. That'll look pretty good, too. So it's kind of looking unified already. That's the idea that it kind of looks like it was planned to come out the way it is. And I think it, I, it was planned to come out the way it is. And that's a good thing. The planning helps a great deal. Not just in art projects. So it'd be interesting to get some feedback and chat going on sometimes about what we're doing in our classes. I uh, was uh, got a message from one of the students uh, earlier that uh, he didn't have a compass uh, like I showed in the video. So he walked around the house and until he found all the various uh, circles like uh, can lids and stuff that were laying around the house that could be used to help him do his project. And I thought that was really, really resourceful personally. Um, and uh, that's a recommendation that, you know, if you don't have some of the tools, you might have to create your own tools or, you know, through measurement uh, or even drawing the circles that you would get from those uh, jar lids on a piece of paper and measuring that circle could tell you a great deal about how to use your patterns. Uh, so uh, you make a lot of artists end up making some of their own tools and their own patterns as well and then you see that show up in their work a lot. You see certain types of uh, shapes in their artwork constantly. So. I've got patterns that I use when I make paintings, especially if they're going to be geometric style paintings, and I uh, simply uh, have to lock all the pieces together with the same mathematics and geometry. And so I've spent time figuring all that out, and then I make the patterns so that it all fits together, instead of just hoping it fits together, it does fit together. So I thought that was very insightful and resourceful that that student spent the time to go around and find all the right size circles that were, you know, in his house somewhere. All right. This is looking great. Okay, let's see what we got. We've got a car. I've got a car going. I hope your car is going this well, too. Uh, I'm really excited about my car. So I think I'll just keep on with this red, working along uh, maybe up into this area right here. And I'll make this red. I think what I'm going to do is continue this on the other side of my little gold stripe right there. Right here. Okay, and I've got
God, of course, if I got all this red down here, it's got to be picked up up here somewhere. So I think we'll just go with a red stripe in the middle. So, I'm uh, feeling pretty good about my art project here. Curious to uh, see some of the feedback too, because uh, by this time we should have uh, some uh, decorations on your car uh, similar to what you see on here, and you should also have some additional materials as well. So it looks like that's the end of this particular session. I'm going to just take one opportunity here to take this light brown color and color in. Uh, this seat cushion right here, so it's kind of make sure I got the light brown. Okay, I do. That's good. So I don't uh, get crossed up in the future here. But this is supposed to be, you know, like leather, a natural material. We've always assumed when we were doing this project over the years. All right. And get that all tucked in there. Okay, and I think that's looking pretty good. So, uh, that's a good session, um, and we'll just pick up there in the next one and just keep coloring. We're making fantastic progress, and uh, thank you for your attention, and we'll get back together soon. Have a nice day. Bye.